Hello everyone, McCall here, and thanks for tuning in to the next episode of Star Trek Adventures Nighthawk, uh, where I've given the captain a complete data dump into his captain's log, and he said Nadog will have a briefing instead. So, without further ado, we are going to jump to the conference room, where the captain is going to lay out his magnificent plan. Anytime, Captain. I'll take it away then. <laughs> Computer, what is the current time index? The current star date is processing. Processing. Star date 83312.3. Fantastic. <laughs> well, in that case, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a few days since the Department of Temporal Investigations left. And the Cations have all, have been informed that all the Cations that we have rescued have been transferred off off station as well. I'm sure DTI and a number of Starfleet historians will have special have some special interest in at least being confronted with a living part of their history at some point in time. In any case, uh, the ramifications haven't necessarily caught up with us yet if there are any i'm sure dti wouldn't fail to inform me when such things actually do take place but there has been somebody else that has taken a special interest in our operations recently the tholians starfleet has told me that they've seen 25 percent more increases in communication in most of the monitored sectors in which they're in commander helsing what's our tactical status operational um, everything's good to go we came through the last mission ship wise relatively unscathed wonderful and have all of your teams do you feel like they're complete at, oper at operational readiness and we're supposed to push them to the brink try to keep them on that on that fine edge at all times sir that's good to hear because we're going to have to be on our toes for our next mission the Tholian Queen has actually requested diplomatic visits with the Federation. The USS Archangel has been assigned with members of the Diplomatic Corps, and we've been ordered to tail them just to make sure that Tholians don't get up to any suspicious temporal activity. Questions? Comments? I, what what do you mean? So Go ahead, Commander. Our next mission. We are to tell the USS Archangel, and we're going to ensure that the Tholians don't get into any crazy, wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. The Archangel will be present in Tholian space for precisely 208 hours and 37 minutes. Our mission is to attempt to track where the other end of this chrono tether was, since it broke down after the time event we interacted with was neutralized. During the course of this mission, we have complete discretion. Complete discretion? Complete discretion. Preliminary telemetry has found that the link has gone to an unassumed red dwarf planet at least two days for Federation space. However, we don't exactly know what's there on the other end. It could be a planet, it could be a station, it could be another ship. So while we tell the USS Archangel, it would be preferred if we could be in and out of Tholian space before the Archangel completes its diplomatic operations. And of course, we have our best hope that our diplomats are actually able to sue for peace. But if necessary, we're gonna be their, 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 their well, we're gonna be their shadow. Quite literally. At this point, so uh, sorry, Specialist Calix is gonna pop up. Um, raise her hand. Captain, the, uh, if I may present to you, the, pre the predicted course of the Archangel heading to Tholia and the path of the Chronoton uh, stream. And she'll pull up a handout that you guys should be seeing now, which is called Time Versus Distance, indicating roughly where the, a direct path to the Assuming 
assuming the Red Dwarf is the destination of the time stream, it would be a it would be quicker for us to head there directly, but in it would be f we would uh, that, that. it would be far easier for the Tholians to find us. However, if we were to trail the Archangel for approximately 50 hours, we could then split branch off and it would only be a 20-ish hour trek. Once we actually enter Tholian space, we'll be able to have a better discretion to see exactly how far away we should shadow the Archangel. But in any case, investigating this Red Dwarf does take priority. She nods. Understood, sir. How would we, sir? How would we explain us separating? Because we're not, we don't have a cloaking device. We're not going to be invisible. Tholians will know we're there. Well, we're going to have to use our discretion to the best of our ability. You're correct. We don't exactly have a full cloaking device, and we're going to be alone on this mission. But in any case, remember, we're not exactly the official escort to the USS Archangel. So, the Tholians are only going to be expecting one ship. Of course, they're probably going to be on the lookout for more, and especially wherever this Chrono Tether ends. But hopefully, we're going to be able to at least have the element of surprise here, while the majority of the Tholian Empire is going to be focused on diplomatic negotiations. Is the Archangel aware of us accompanying them? They are, yes. Roger. Yes, they are. I'm just curious, do, if we're having a diplomatic meeting, why are we going straight into the spider's nest? Because the spiders, so to speak, tried at one point in time, no pun intended, to manipulate the history of a Federation planet. That is most definitely worth investigating. Frankly, we have no other choice. We need to have a better understanding of the situations that took place, and regardless of however long they claim to actually have been on Kate before our arrival, wherever this chron if this chrono tether is still active, there exists a possibility that they could use it against other Federation worlds at any place in time. So, before we rendezvous with the USS Archangel, Lieutenant Vaid had like preliminary scans of Tholian space, along has, has long has, along with additional passive scans, once we enter, of course, you're going to be looking for any temporal dispersions, Tholian vessels, etc, etc. Commander Helsing, I'd like security to remain on high alert for the duration of our trip. Will be continuously at red alert status. Roger. Yes, sir. Commander Thishan, of course, this is going to be a long, a, a long mission, but we need to make sure we manage our power output effectively so the Tholians don't detect us. That's all on you. Of course. And of course. Cox, of course, we hope that no casualties actually end up in our lap, but if we do, you know what to do. Sick Bay will be ready, Captain. That's all I have for you people. Get your st get your departments prepared before we rendezvous with the Archangel. Dismissed. Very well. Okay. Um, who does anybody have anything they would like to do before they? Rendezvous with the Archangel. It doesn't sound like anyone has anything they'd like to do. So, we are... I'd, yep. I'd actually like to, uh... Oh, never mind. It doesn't matter. We're gonna talk to them anyway. Okay. <laughs> Forget it. Then we are going to... So, after roughly one day's prep time, you meet the USS Archangel. 
uh, slightly outside Tholian space. As you approach, uh, you receive a coded pulse from them, uh, in indicating that it's extremely pro likely that all communications will be monitored, and to use a low or a low fre low frequency, low bandwidth uh, voice communications, if necessary. Go ahead and signal a reply. And we acknowledge, and we'll proceed. Uh, we'll proceed at the same distance. Okay. Without any further indication that anything is amiss, awry, or askew, the USS Archangel begins to head towards Tholian space. We're awaiting our four Tholian Ectomi class cruisers. They will move into escort, and at this point, I would like the first roll of the day to be a black alert uh, run silent test, which is going to be someone operating a control plus, s I always forget this roll, even though I've had you guys roll it several bloody times. Control engineering assisted by ship's computer security? That sounds about right. Difficulty so, 2. That would be right. Uh, so, who's got control engineering and who wants to roll the ship? I got the ship. Okay. Alright. I guess I'll be doing the control engineering. Okay. That's a success from the Nighthawk. Got and that's two from the Shran, so you guys start with one momentum. Uh, the Tholian ships make no or do not seem to notice your presence as the USS Nighthawk slips into uh, black red alert, red alert, black alert, however the captain wants to call it, and falls behind. So now. Uh, you are sort of against the clock, not only against the USS Archangel's programmed or scheduled departure from the Tholian space, but also against whatever mach machinations the GM might have set to go off at certain time codes. Um, once you decide which path you want to take, I will of course start counting hours. Uh, do you wish to follow them as long as possible until you break off, or do you wish to try a more direct route? No, we'll shadow them for maybe 10 or 15 hours, and then we'll go ahead and break off. Okay. That works for me. Just making a couple notes here. So... Uh, let's start rolling some science scans to see what the heck might be going on. Uh, this is going to be Vaid's time to shine. Uh, Vaid Insight plus Science. Uh, ship will assist uh, with sensors plus science, and this is going to be a difficulty of three. That's one from Vaid. And two from the Nighthawk. Oh. Nicely done, Nighthawk. Uh, awesome so, roll. Yeah, pretty dang good. Uh, passive sensors, because you don't get dare go active at the moment, uh, are not revealing a heck of a lot. Uh, you're gathering information on several planets and star systems that up until now have been uh, unreachable by s standard Federation scanning techniques. Uh, there do appear to be several Tholian um, annexed worlds uh, taken during the time of James T. Kirk, and they seem to be, or they seem to have several large defensive platforms or, orbiting their uh, main planet of in the system. 
Other than that, you're not detecting a heck of a lot, just picking up information that might be useful to Starfleet intelligence, or Starfleet in general, later on. So, the ten hours or so has, uh, has come and gone, and is now the time you'd like to split off? Indeed. Okay. Just just to ensure that the uh, the Archangel knows, we'll go ahead and uh, calm them, saying, well, good luck, we're out. Mm -hmm. You do not receive a reply, obviously. You can only imagine the torturous diplomatic encounters that is currently going on inside the Ar the hull of the Archangel. Over the time, over the past ten hours, you have noticed part of their internal life support system to be more converted to that more comfortable, um, that more suitable for that of a Tholian, which is, I believe, something around the lines of 400 degrees Kelvin. Which is, uh, yeah, 400... 480 degrees Kelvin, which is 404 degrees Fahrenheit. You can only imagine, or the Shran, you can only imagine what it's doing to their internal systems. It's probably not good. Okay, so, breaking off after 10 hours. And at this point, I'm going to need another black alert check, please. Uh, if you m wish to maintain the safe cruising speed of about warp 7.5, uh, that difficulty will be 2. If you want to attempt to go at your ship's max speed, which is 8.5, uh, that's going to be difficulty 3. Well, time is of the essence, so I think we push it here. Okay. All right. You got the momentum to tram. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. Okay. Gonna need it. Yeah, you're gonna need it. No, you don't. Yeah. And the 20s just keep coming. That's going... Or no, sorry, the the ones just keep coming. That's... And we'll get a momentum back. Yes, indeed. Very well. Well, there goes half of my fun encounters. You can still get us on the way out. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you'll be in transit for roughly another 20 hours or so. Um, does anybody have anything they wish to do during the time alone in space? I would like to do uh, check the, um, the quantum tether okay. and do some research on that and like try to figure out What's going on on that? Okay, uh, this is going to be um, an insight science test, please. Um, now the tether is no longer active. Um, once you borked the Cation side of things and the temporal anomaly closed up, the tether dissipated. But you can certainly go through the logs. Okay. Uh, so if you're just so, uh, actually roll me reason plus science, please. Oh, uh, okay. Dif sorry, yeah. Difficulty of... Let's say difficulty of three. And uh, ship okay. can assist with computers plus science. I'm going to go ahead and use All momentum. Right. Okay. And uh, quantum mechanics. I'll let that work, yeah. Quantum mechanics, temporal mechanics, that sort of thing. There's the three successes. Okay. So what is very interesting about this is that the only reason that a quant that a chroniton tether like this should could like if they wanted to send the Tholians into the, into the past and leave them there, they did not need this fancy setup. Um, the fact they could have just punched a hole through space-time using any number of methods. Lord knows James Kirk is responsible for discovering at least three of them. Um, and just leaving the Tholians in the past and no one would be the wiser. Uh, the problem is, is that... So, that, that, that. 
that means that the quantum tether was require was siphoning the lava off and most likely it was going to do some it was transporting the lava out of the Cation mountain of Wassertop back to wherever its home is meaning that whatever its home wherever the other end of the tether is needed to be prepared to deal with the lava in some way shape or form okay and so do we have any idea so was it being transported to like Tholia or do we have any idea that's what you're attempting to find out by tracing okay. the because the path of sure. the chronoton beam is different than the path to Tholia okay yeah there's the handout that's called... what I thought I just wanted to make sure mm-hmm okay 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 good to know okay thank you you are welcome Anything else people want to do en route? Doesn't sound like it. Okay, cool. Well, oh. At some point, whenever you can fit it in, um, uh, Vayud and Thrushan had both expressed interest in getting some training in either phasers or hand to hand. Well, that sounds like a fine time right now to keep everyone up and operational. We'll do that in the holodeck. So we have the Shran, Vaid, and Helsing. All. And just for funsies, I'm going to say that this is the uh, routine phaser drill practice of uh, Mr. Helsing's Alpha Shift that Vaid and the Shran are joining in. Take it away. Right. This is going to do this one off, start off a little bit easier, then move into a little bit more complicated. This is just getting familiar, more comfortable with the phaser, letting it become one of you, and then seeing what we can do into more active type situations. Um, any questions? What's wrong? <laughs> Which nope. end do we point? A little bit of pointy end goes away from me. Goes to the target. Um, and then right after that, I'll say, okay, and targets pop up immediately in front of them. Now, you'll have a, a quick reaction time before they will shoot a mild stinging burst at you. If you hit it first, the sting doesn't come. If you're a little bit late or miss, well, you might get stung. Any questions? Let's it's give it a shot. It's just a sting, right? Uh, yeah, just a sting. And four little, um, kind of like from the other IP that begins with a stars that they used to, there you go. Oh, that'll work too. Um, come up and well, seeing as we're going into Tholian space, we'll have Tholians as our op for for this exercise and begin. All right. So, uh, the Shran and Vaid, this is going to be a control plus security test, a uh, difficulty of two. Well, neither of you operate. Uh, you all point your weapons, uh, pull the trigger, and something just isn't quite right. Either it be bounces off, it shots go Safety's wide. Safety's on. <laughs> Looks like you're having the same type problem they had in old Earth firearms, where they had a trigger that they had to pull back, where it would cause the weapon to go to the side as they pulled back too hard it's a nice squeeze on this you have a little firing set a little button that you just push so there shouldn't be any jerking motion so try that again oh 
wait a minute. Now the Tholian troopers get to respond. Yeah, uh, Vaid, you take one point of stress damage. Non-lethal, of course. As, it, as your target decides to zap back. Uh, Thishran, on the other hand, your reaction time is much quicker. As your as your trooper or as your target decides to fire back, and you just disco your way out using a fancy pirouette. That interpretive dance actually comes in handy. It does. You'd be surprised. Wow! And reset. Remember, push. Push the firing stud. Don't pull and jerk. All right, guys. Another control. Or another roll, please. Oh, gosh. <laughs> She's good thing is training. <laughs> Meanwhile, Hanara has just blasted his. And Loxley decides to get fancy and delimb hers before a final shot to the head. Loxley showing off again. Well, sir, I can't dance, but I can shoot. <laughs> yep. It's amazing how you were able to ricochet that one shot after it took off one limb to get the second limb. It's a fractal. Well, they're, they are a reflective or a refractive species, sir. Oh, that's something... I have to keep in mind. That's that has some tactical implications. I didn't think about. Well done. Uh, meanwhile, the two of the two training dummies, a, a uh, Thishran and Vaid, uh, both managed to dodge your uh, responders. If you can't hit, but you can dodge, is good. Yeah. Means we limit the visits to Doctor Coax. Now, as a reminder, you can in combat you can always take a minor action to uh, do a charge with a phaser. I'll go ahead and, and charge. And you can also take your minor action to aim. Mm-hmm. Which lets you do something else. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, so, aiming is a you may reroll a single d20 made. So we're going again? Yep. One more go. All right. So take a, take a pause, either charge it to get an extra effect or aim. Let's start aiming first. Okay. Okay, so Thishran, you can re-roll that one zero. And uh, that really should be control plus security, not control engineering. Oh, whoop. Unless you're trying to outthink your target. There you go, Vaid. Yes! Uh, <laughs> All oh, right, there you, go. you gain a momentum. I think, I think we found something how you, you guys do this now. Well done. And Turns out the key was actually aiming. That, that could be it. Uh, Nicely done. And on that note, um, uh, you hear Thushran calling you all to the bridge because sensors have just picked something up. I'm calling them the bridge oh, from the hall. I'm sorry, Bashir is calling you to the... <laughs> All right. So... We'll I'm the one on. calling you, and I'm confused. <laughs> what are you calling us? You don't want to know. <laughs> Not appropriate for... <person. laughs> Um, so Thishran, uh everyone is everyone is approach. Ah, everyone enters the bridge, just as Rani begins rattling off the description. Uh, you are approximately fifteen hours into your um, post Archangel journey. When uh, Miss Rani has catches ah, has detected something on long range scanners, it appears to be a sp uh, space facility. Facility? 
Yes, sir. Yes. On screen. So, extreme range uh, brings you to here. Yes, uh, yes, sir. The station appears to be uh, five kilometers in length, and it appears to have ship building and maintenance c capabilities, and that's about as far as I can tell from here. No sign that they're detecting us. Only five kilometers in length. That's that's rather small. This isn't the projected end of the uh, chrono tether, is it? Well, it's on its route, sir. We were Starfleet. Uh, Starfleet Intelligence never said where the tether ended. They just said that the star was its was all was its most predicted uh, was its highest endpoint with its greatest predictability. I see, but it's still in, but it is in its path. Yes, sir. Are there the inner with passive sensors? Can we pick up the it's it's the power source that is, of this facility? That's going to be a sensors plus engine, or that's going to be an insight plus engineering role, and the ship will assist with sensors plus science. Difficulty. Um, because you're still at stealth, is going to be difficulty three. So there's that. And who's rolling to scan? Is that going to be Euthashran, or is it going to be Vaid? I, I will. Okay. Wouldn't it be more Vaid thing? It's an, it's an engineering scan, isn't it? Or is it insights? Uh, you're trying to figure out what makes the station tick, so I'm calling that an, an engineering role. Okay, fair enough. You. Then that is me. Yeah, the ship did the science -y part. Yeah, that's because ship does science good. I do science good. <laughs> uh, due to the ship being at black alert and such an extreme range, uh, Thishran, you're not able to get any details beyond uh, what you're already seeing uh, you're seeing three uh, you're seeing a grand total of four vessels uh, three of them are cruisers similar to the ones that met the Archangel and one of them is a tarantula class dreadnought which measures roughly a full kilometer in length they appear to be tethered to the station and powered down Sorry, Captain, I wasn't able to get uh, any more information on this one. Well, in any case, do, are we... My, the real question, regardless of whether the station is doing here or not, is there, are there any residual uh, temporal energies coming from this point in space? That's going to be another uh, sensor sweep, which will be Insight Science. I'm going to go ahead and take that one. Okay. And sensor operations, temporal anomaly, that sort of stuff. Temporal. And ship will assist again with sensor science. It would have been difficulty three. I think I'm going to let that succeed at, with and take threat, if you're okay with that. Of course you are. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> uh, so there is a dissipating... Now... Yeah. There's trace elements of neutrinos and chronotone particles that indicate that there was a temporal presence here, or tempor a temporal event of some nature. However, it is dissipated roughly a week ago, which would coincide with the um, ceasing of the events on the planet Kate. So it would be a good hypothesis that... How many hours do we have left until the Archangel supposedly 
is uh, finished with its diplomatic negotiations at this point. Tons. Uh, you have used up roughly, by my calculations, you're at hour 27. And they are not going to leave for 207. So you have a lot of time. If need be, we could hit this one in more detail on the way back. If we don't find anything at the uh, red, red, uh, red Dwarf. That's what I'm thinking. At this point in time, regardless of whether these ships are powered down or not, we don't really have the capacity or enough information to determine exactly what's going on here. And if there's something else left on our path, it's still worth investigating. So we'll come back here. Okay. Let's uh, re-enter warp. Well, if we if we were continuing at warp, let's make sure we uh, re-enter warp, maintain black alert, and uh, monitor the ships for any any possible movements towards us mm -hmm. or uh, towards the archangel. Okay. Recommend we go at the slower speed, sir. Most definitely. Let's bring us to uh, warp four until we get a safe distance away from the station and re increase again to maximum warp. Okay. <clears throat> the station and the ships make no effort to track or uh, pursue you. As you make your as you make your way roughly two or three light years away and jump back to uh, full speed. Now, um, are you at safe speed or full speed? Once uh, we're good enough, like three, four light years away, they'll we'll go back to full speed. Okay. So make me Slow, slowly ramping up to full speed. That is right. All right. Uh, make me another uh, control plus engineering, and ship will assist with computers plus engine or computers plus security for your black alert. That's one from that, and that is okay. Hmm. Because I find it amusing. That's a complication from the Shran. <coughs> Which means that I'm going to cause a breach to the computer system. So roughly three, uh, roughly, uh, da, da, da. as you ramp up to full speed again, uh, the Shran, the needle over the red line that you were thought was fine the first time and therefore should be perfectly fine the second time turns out it is not fine the second time around as you begin to rev the engines up to full the ship's uh, active camouflage system uh, suffers a computational error which leaves it disabled until you are able to fix it oops Straight chronotons. <laughs> well, that's a... Unplug that's... it. Unplug Wait it. 10 seconds. <laughs> Plug it back in. In that case, I want to immediately order all stop, and uh, we've got an estimated time on repairs. Uh, roll me a daring plus engineering, Mr. Thishran. All right. Uh, difficulty of two. Just jump straight to percussive maintenance. Ah, there's the difficulty two, Matt. Well, Thishran, you can... Just like everything else, it can be fixed with the uh, self-sealing stem bolt, a little bit of know-how, and a bit of a Andorian elbow grease. Should be up and running in no time. However... Sorry, Captain, I got it. Pardon me. However, there is a slight complication um, because with that roll, I'm just going to cut you over to here. A patrol cruiser is moving around at extreme range. And it is entirely possible that they have that they will see you so let's do it this way. Yeah, 
There we go. And so, uh, they're they're at extreme range. And so, Thashran, you need to fix this immediately, otherwise they will find you. So roll me one more daring plus engineering test, please. I, uh, difficulty one, because you succeeded the first time. And there's three successes, so two moment, two momentum. <clears throat> or just you create the advantage, and we never have to worry about that problem again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want to create that if you want to create that advantage, you're welcome to do so. Sure, let's do that. Okay. Is that two momentum? That's the t yeah. So two momentum to create the advantage means that you have uh, figured out how to make the active camouflage systems work while going at maximum warp, which has been something you've been trying to figure out for a while, but it's all Starfleet engineers do their best thinking while in undercover situations in enemy space where the potential for failure is catastrophic. Uh, practical experience is always the best way to learn. Ah, okay. So... That is up and running. And I just need to quickly get my math right here. Just so that I can record things properly. So it is going to be roughly another uh, 20 hours uh, for you to reach, to head from the station to the, re to the Red Dwarf, assuming no other problems happen in the meantime. Do I have that math right? That was that. 10, 15. Yep. Yeah. Alright then, well, Mr. Davis, go ahead and uh, get us back on track, please. <laughs> Very well. So, we will head to this location. Star classified as VTX-1064, a, a completely bog standard red dwarf floating out in the midst of Tholian space. Um, when you, you drop out at extreme range of the solar system and perform a scan. Uh, initial scans, I should say, uh, show you that there is no ah, there are three planets uh, all three of them are rocky uh, mercury style planets that are in close orbit to the system there's a debris disk that is fairly standard with any star system of rocks dust etc that do not make it into planetary formation at the edge uh, this system appears to have been strip mined uh, so some time ago and there's currently no active, no active signatures that you're detecting. However, if you wish to be a little more thorough, that's going to be a VAID job. I have a question to the GM. Of course. Uh, how much would I, as the captain, at least have knowledge of potential? Uh, time travel vectors in terms of just like you know the wrapping around a star and things like that oh, is, would that be locked behind the intelligence database in case i needed to perform this sort of maneuver or would i just have prior knowledge of these uh you know potential yeah. like maneuvers existing i would say that you know that they exist james t kirk of course wrote the book on it or at least he published the book one of his uh, it was written by spock Kirk just added co-authorship. Um, it would take some time to... You know that it exists. It would take some time to run specific calculations. But mm -hmm. it could be done. Okay. But the like the light speed breakaway factor or the slingshot event, like things like that aren't exactly... I uh, mean, the actual methods to take care of them, yeah, we would have to run calculation, but it's not exactly like hidden from... No, it's not hidden. Okay. I would say that certain examples have been made of captains who 
recklessly have tried it in the past. In fact, that's a cool idea for an adventure I might run at some point, but that's another thing entirely. I didn't mean to take away from Vade's moment. Let's, no uh, we can get back to that now. Okay, so Vade, Insight Science, Ship Assist with Sensor Science, difficulty of two. And there's the Nighthawk, doing two successes already. Oh, that is one success from Vaid and a complication. I'm just going to take that threat. Okay. Thank you, Benevolent GM. Oh, don't thank me yet. Don't thank me yet. <clears throat> so, this is... Uh, you get one momentum out of the deal. And... So, all of the temporal... Or if there are... Ugh, Michael, learn to speak. Of the signs that you should be looking for to or the signs that should exist to a decaying temporal event, such as chronotons, neutrinos, and whatever other imaginary particles exist, uh, you find none of it here. You've given the system a good sweep, but sadly there doesn't appear to be anything present. Would you like for me to look for anything else, Captain? You get one free question. You do indeed. Are we looking for life signs or anything specific to um, what we just uh, searched for with the nutrient? If you can sense... If something else was in this area, you know, a week or two weeks ago, that might have been the target and they moved it away. Okay. Because otherwise we can just backtrack up the, the path that we came from till we find the end. Okay. Is that what you're spending your question on? Yes. Okay. Uh, this system has not had anything in the means of traffic or it doesn't even look like a freighter with any sort of engine trouble has passed through here in at any point in the last three or four weeks. Uh, no, uh, no decaying ion trail. There isn't even a Tholian system um, ownership beacon present here. This system is dead. There's nothing, okay. Captain. I'm just consulting the time versus distance chart real quick to make sure I have no additional questions before I give more orders. Mm -hmm. And so by my count, you have spent roughly 53 hours. I should have actually made a mention of where that station was on that on this graph. Uh, the time versus distance, it would be roughly the leftmost border of the Yadar sector. On the green path? Yeah, on the green path. What exactly are the... Uh... Who exactly is the primary ambassador or the primary diplomat upon um, the archangel? Or is this stuff not? Is that just not relevant? It's not relevant to the plot. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. Yep. Probably probably one of the Rigelian species because they're pretty cool. Maybe the turtle species. Well, in any case, one way or another, there's nothing over here. That's uh, the only thing that we have to pick up on so far is exactly that space station. So let's go ahead and back, head back and hopefully we can find something additionally here. Okay. So. Turn around and book it back. 
Uh, one more black alert test, please. Uh, this is going to be a scene change, so you'll lose one momentum. All right, we were at, should have been at three, so we're still at two. Okay. Uh, so, uh, control engineering and security plus, or computers plus security. That's two from the Shran. And one from the ship. Fantastic. That is all you need to book it back. And book it back, we do. Uh, sorry, just give me a second here. That puts you at that. <laughs> cool. So, the USS Nighthawk returns. And the space station is present, but its ships are not. Now, as we went back, did we, was there any of that chroniton energy along the path, or does it stop here? Um, I will give this to you and say that they're uh, doing some passive scans. The chroniton tether is was so narrow it was difficult to detect its existence in the first place, and thus its decayed path is almost non-existent, even when even when you knew what you were looking for, but there is no evidence that it is here. At least backed between the station and the star, there is no evidence of it. All right, well, the ships are gone. Are there any life signs on the station? That'd probably be an active scan. Yeah, but, um... yeah. Insight plus medicine, please. Ship can assist with sensors plus science. Uh, this will be a difficulty of two. I'll go ahead and grab Kalox for something like that. Sure. <clears throat> Ship is hot. Ship's rolling good. And so is Kalox. So that's one momentum to you guys. <clears throat> the inside temperature of the station is 480 degrees Fahrenheit or Kelvin, which makes it very difficult to pick out life signs. However, um, Dr. Coax is pretty certain that you see approximately five of them. Just five. Um, and because you rolled so well, you are detecting a narrow beam transmission uh, beaming from the station out to the direction of Tholia. Can we determine its contents? Ah, this is going to be an um, interception. So this is going to be a whoever's running, whoever wants to run the interception, is going to be control plus engineering, and the ship will assist with computers plus engineering. And this is going to be a difficulty of three. Okay. One from the Nighthawk. Oh. Nothing from Thashran. Uh, you are unable to determine the nature of the communications. Um, they, uh, they, are in, they are heavily encrypted. And the second that they detect that you are in the area, they shift frequencies into a completely different ba band and change their encryption codes, forcing you to start all over again. At which point the station begins to... Uh, the station begins to shoot at you because you gave away your position. That's the complication. That is very inconsiderate. Very. Uh, doubly so because they hit. And that is going to be a grand total of that plus that. That's not terrible. That's... Um, Okay, that's kind of terrible. Uh, so that is 11 points of damage because they have Vicious 1. <clears throat> uh, so your ship is scale 5, so that drops it down to 6 damage. And do you have anything in the way of armor or 
anything else like that. Got the shields. Yep, so the shields would eat it. So that is six points to shields. And then your, shield, your ship is also going to suffer a breach. And who or where is the breach going to be? Engines. I, I like the fact you said who. Well, I was kind of <laughs> hoping for a structure hit, but you know. So, that would be a hit to engines. Which means that the USS Nighthawk is disabled. Until... Until, I believe, the Shran has to perform some sort of test to get it operational. Or we'll lose two power. Yes, indeed. Well, even if that's the case, um, I'd like to see if they could target their communications array to make sure they can't send out send out any more outgoing signals. Okay. The first the first thing I want to make sure is that at least try to isolate ourselves and isolate the station from obviously sending any reinforcements or notifying anybody. Understood. Uh, so this so this is going to be a. Uh, control plus security test for tactical officer and the ship will assist with weapons plus security. I'll use one of those momentum. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and grab the ship. You don't oh, shoot at my ship. God. That's uh, six successes. So that maxes you out in... Yeah, so that is... Yeah, that maxes you out momentum-wise. And so you have... Uh, your phasers are versatile, which means that you can choose how you wish to... Well, the phasers have two floating momentum, so you can do with that as you wish. Yeah, we'll throw that into... Whatever it is piercing to knock out the resistance, yep. right? It is, yes. So that would be four piercing. Seven challenge dice. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I'm sorry. You were attempting to attack a specific system, which would have been a difficulty three test. means you only have five momentum. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. My apologies. Hmm. Okay. That's a significant amount of damage. Okay, and let's see how does targeting specific systems work in combat. You know, I never actually thought you'd be shooting the station. You're usually so much better at stealth. Well, at this point, time is of the essence. Indeed, indeed it is. Oh, I was still thinking I should create a boarding party and make the advantage that our spacesuits can survive in that kind of heat and uh, see what's going on in there. Well, that's always a possibility. You still could, uh, assuming there's any of it left by the time you all are done shooting it. Um, yeah, I don't see that rule immediately, so I'm just going to wing it. Okay, uh, you puncture through the system, um, or you puncture through its shields, their shields are still up, but enough of it, enough damage makes it through that you're able to target the array and destroy it. <clears throat> and at which point the station does not continue to fire at you. It continues to raise its shields, and the few life forms on board. Now. You're not really able to figure out what they're doing thanks to the shields being raised. They can raise their shields as much as they want. If as only we as... had advanced transporters. <laughs> if only we had advanced transporters. If only we had a way to beam through these shields and properly prepare in a way to. Oh, With I all wonder. this momentum we have. Wink, wink. Yeah. Commander Helsling with me. <laughs> On the way. Okay, so we're doing a boarding action. Yeah. Cool. So, who is going to go on board the creepy station? Or the mysterious station? I'm going to lead it. Obviously, I think uh, the Shran has his own problems to deal with right now. 
Yeah, I got a few repairs to do. Uh huh. Dad, I will take you. Okay. I will take more security if anybody else wants to play security. <laughs> um, Hanara and um, Noel would probably be the better choices. Or, or Loxley. Also, we just take a transport a pattern enhancers. Okay. Okay. Just in case. So I believe those are an opportunity two, which yep. means yay threat. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's fine. Nothing. Nothing wrong with spending a bit of giving more threat to the GM, right? Right. Always. Okay. So, I'm afraid I couldn't find any good set pieces for this, so we're going to have to go Theater of the Mind for the actual station part. Um. <clears throat> so, first of all, we have to beam through shields, which is the first time that we get to break out the advanced transporter talent, and we see if uh, crewman uh, Zell is capable of operating them. So... Uh, using the advanced transporters technol um, allows those to beam in beam through shields at an increased difficulty. So, because you are beaming from a pad to a non-pad, that's already difficulty three. And trying to beam through shields increases that one more. So, you need to beat a difficulty four test. And this is going to be a control engineering, and the ship will assist with sensors plus engineering. She has momentum. In is it an activation of her? Uh, yes, it, it would is. Be. That's one from Nighthawk. You need three successes here, Zell. All right, I'll go ahead and roll for Zell. Control engineering. Mm-hmm. I can go ahead and uh, buy a die, or well, yeah, I'll, no, well, yeah, create the advantage. We'll, we'll, we'll do two. That's much, oh. much better there. Okay, you're just creating the advantage. Yeah, we're just gonna create the advantage. Aw, okay, well, that takes all the fun out of rolling. Uh, cool. <clears throat> Zell, um, with the dexterity of a piano player who knows her tune, uh, Zell, Zell's fingers dance across the pad. Uh, she looks up nods her head as you all vanish and materialize onto these into one of the main control shafts of the station. So, what you notice about the station is it's a wreck. Um, you guys have been through uh, Thishran's engine room when he's doing, when he's doing um, maintenance overhauls and you guys thought that was messy. This station has uh, cables dripped, uh, cables all over the place. Um, pr protective, um, uh, protective walls that keep the, uh, or that insulate the internals from the extreme heat, have been discarded or burnt or discarded away, and several of the internals of the station are literally starting to melt. This station is not in active service with the Tholian military. It's still 480 degrees Kelvin, so, you know, you're in full EVA suits. But... Yeah. So, okay. what do you guys wish to do? Do you have any idea where the life signs at, Lieutenant? Uh, insight, medis insight Medicine, please. Uh, difficulty of three. There's... Oh, no, that's uh, okay. Zell's roll. I guess I'll just take it. Yeah. <laughs> did you want to do it, or did you want me to do it? Whose insight's higher? Or med? Oh. You've gotten rather quiet there, uh, Vaid. Oh, uh, I was... Uh, we're at the same. Ah. No problem. 
Uh, you're not able yeah. to pick up the life signs at this point in time, Bashir. Okay, let's try to make our way to a command post. Do you have any idea where that might be? Or uh, I will say that you're able to figure that out yeah, based okay. on the scans you've received earlier. Okay. Uh, it would be uh, what you believe to be the bridge is this nubbin up top here. It has several communication arrays attached to it. Well, it used to be until the uh, Nighthawk blew most of them away. Sorry, not sorry. Fair enough. So, approaching the... Um, I have a Tholian... Where are they? There they are. So, uh, approaching the uh, bridge is much more difficult than one should imagine it to be. Uh, thanks to the heat and the poor repair of the station... Um, you find that if you put your weight too hard on a single surface, it weakens and potentially gives way underneath, make, uh, causing, causing you to be very careful while climbing stairs. It's not uh, fairly soon afterwards. You make your way to the command center. Where are you? You find a single Tholian who is... Should not be in his EVA suit, but I forgot about making a non-EVA suit Tholian token. I'll fix that during break. Anyways, does he see you? Nope. Uh, nope. He is too bit. He or she? It's they're, I believe, uh, agendered. Or it's so difficult for outsiders to tell. Doesn't matter. Um, it's too busy poking away at several of the tra several consoles surrounding its multi-legged body and too busy sh uh, hissing, shouting into a mounted communicator that is attached to his shoulder pad. Um, you're able to overhear him say if Starfleet shoots out another one of these if Starfleet detects that, we're st that we can communicate with our fleet before we can launch this strike it will be too late. You have precisely 17 minutes, 4 seconds to get the, the secondary arrays online and transmitting. Helsing. Fire. We shoot him. <laughs> okay. Um, as because, well, one of you can shoot, so control security from the first of you. I got it. All right. We we'll use uh, a momentum. Okay. Uh, this is going to be just to seal the deal. Uh, this well, that might be difficult. I'm going to spend some of that threat to increase the difficulty because of the heat. Uh, the environment could potentially interfere with your phasers, increasing the dif the difficulty from two successes to three. And give me that second dice. I'll do. Take three momentum total. Mm -hmm. And there's the three successes you need. Uh, roll me some challenge dice, please. It's only eight. Only eight, he says. Yeah, well, security officers, what can you do? Seven points. <clears throat> um, so we still got momentum. You do. You should have three momentum, I believe. I'll uh, use one to reroll the zeros. Uh, nope, that would be. F uh, you're down to two momentum. Now one momentum left. Okay. One momentum left. Uh, reroll those zeros. That's uh, twelve in total. You pause your time in. Uh, you pa you time your shot perfectly. Just as the Tholian ends his communication, you stun him with a single blast. And he col and it collapses at the computer console. Situation normal. Everything's fine here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
No, sir. All right. Nice shooting, Tex. Uh, let's see what we can figure out what they're doing here exactly and what they're aiming for. We have 17 minutes to figure it out. <laughs> right. Okay, so I, me and Dad are hacking the computer. Okay, <laughs> computer hacking time. Uh, roll. Do me. we have dramatic computer hacking music? <laughs> One of these days, I'll. Or nothing that isn't copyrighted, I'm afraid. Ah, true, true. <laughs> um, roll me a control or daring plus security, please. And. Uh, one of you will take the lead, the other one will assist. And focuses, of yeah. course, include hacking, computer systems. This is so alien, I'll even allow alien technology. Uh, the difficulty you're looking for is three. Actually, I'm going to spend threat and make it difficulty four. Because Tholians, just the age of the computer system and its general state of disrepair. You actually have hacking, don't you, if memory serves? Bad. Yes, I do. Okay. Go ahead and lead it. I will help you. Alrighty. What is the role again? Uh, that's a good question. What was the role? It was daring plus engineering. Cool. Okay. <clears throat> You have one momentum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please use that. Okay. That's one from Bashir. Oh, no. Did it not take? Okay, nope, there it we did go. take. <laughs> and it was the three successes you need. Yes. Okay, you are into the security system. So, the first thing that you find is the is a manifesto decrying the existence of the Tholian ascendancy um, it uh, it reads as a perfectly grim it reads as well as a conspiracy theory that has been formatted by a, a very thorough gra a very thorough grammatically correct individual uh, it talks about the crimes of the uh, ruling hive. Uh, it talks about the uh, the theft of of uh, nat of resources from all of its um, from all of the star systems, even those who have declared their ah, and the eradication of those who have declared their sovereign independence of the state. Um, the second thing you find is that the last orders given to this fleet was to proceed to Tholia and attack any Tholian and Federation assets once you have reached the target. And if authorized, um, er, and a series of authorization codes to give if challenged. <laughs> Make sure Commander Helsing has those codes. <laughs> uh, so, science officer can ask one free question just because I'm a nice guy. Well, out of character, <laughs> that way I don't waste this question. Uh, we got those uh, codes, right? Yes, you have them and now. And Helsing has it. Oh. All right. What would y'all okay. like to ask? So, we have the fact that these guys are trying to take both of us out because they don't like their own people and want to blame us, basically. That's the way I'm taking it. We got it. Now, is that 17 minutes they're going to be attacking the Archangel? And that's where I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Right. Yep, that's why I'm taking it. You got to get that information out to them. Yep. Um, so I basically, yeah, I would download all this to a pad and 
um, I say we get out of here, get to the captain and let them know what's going on. Now, I'm curious if we can set this thing to at least overload, overload or at least shut down and make something so it takes them a while to repair. I don't know if I really want to just blow it up, but... Um... Commander Helsing, do you happen to have any grenades on you? <laughs> no, sir, I didn't bring them this time. Uh, that surprises but, me. But, <laughs> do we have a tricorder that's not being used? Oh, God. I mean, any phaser could be set to overload with the push of uh, very easily if Star Trek has taught us anything. Yeah. I I, I will let uh, Commander Helsing take my phaser because I think we've proven it's useless in my hands. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and see if you can uh, turn that into a bomb. I want to download all of these documentations and set up the uh, transporter beacons so we can get out of here okay. roger and the information that we sent on your pad to the captain was to be transmitted immediately to dark angel and those guys and is there an exhaust port type defect in this ship where a single overload phaser will cause I a cascade reaction that. i think if we tie uh, if we try to do something like that, it would probably be more in engineering. I say if we explode the control panel and main, the main, I think we'd probably be safe. Unless we could figure out something quite big. <laughs> if I find the multivariant tachyon induction equalizer, I Only if you boost the will... induction. <laughs> uh, I mean... So we'll find that multivariant tachyon induction equalizer. That's right. Okay, uh, roll me an insight plus engineering, please, to see if you find the multivariate uh, tachyon injection equalizer. Or induction equalizer. <laughs> I'm not going... I will never punish a uh, use of Trek no babble. No. Covert ops. Uh, small would, arms phasers, by chance. I would allow covert infiltration. operations. Or infiltration, okay. either of those. There's the two successes you need. Found it. Yep. You find it. <laughs> you... <laughs> Due to the station's uh, disrepair, many of the uh, critical systems that run into the command center are woefully exposed. And you're able, with your practiced eye, uh, able to find a particularly vulnerable yet load-bearing structure to place the phaser on. At uh, this point, it's going to require a... Uh, difficulty 3 transporter test from Zell, uh, control engineering, and the ship will assist with sensors engineering. That's one from Nighthawk. Who's got Zell? I've got the Zell. All right. Control engineering. That's the three you need. <clears throat> So, in true st dramatic Star Trek fashion, uh, you hit the material. Uh, Zell hits the energize button, and you materialize. And not five seconds later, the control center of the station blows up in a uh, rather spectacular conflagration of blue and green flames. Green flame. Sorry, oh, God. role playing system. <laughs> <laughs> And you are materialized on the transporter deck room. Thank you, Chief. Transporters worked excellent. You're really getting the hang of this. To the cat to the bridge. Meeting room. Okay. <laughs> Can we take bio break? Yes, we can take a bio break because this is a good time for a scene change. Uh, That's so what I was thinking. Normally you would lose momentum, but you have none left. So, ha, 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 ha. I mean, yeah. So we're going to take a bio break. Let's get back here at half past the hour. So about 10 minutes from now. 
and I will see you guys shortly. And we are back. Uh, the cap, I believe everyone has rushed into the conference room to figure out what's going on. And what they're going to do next. So yeah, I present everything to uh, the captain of what we found and all the information, the codes, and all of that stuff. So... This individual doesn't necessarily speak about any additional accomplishments potentially within the Tholian government or anywhere on Tholia. Uh, there, the the message that was, or the information that was retrieved does not contain any of that information, no. Yeah. And then we have our work cut out for us, but nevertheless, I'll go ahead and send a coded, uh, a coded message to the Archangel, but nevertheless, they're still in the belly of the beast they have assuming they are a capable ship though but the they it lies that there lies the concern exactly they have no idea exact what's coming their way and neither potentially to the Tholians. okay um let's see how well that works um roll me a daring plus engineering test whoever wants to be the communications officer which is probably Rani. And then the ship can assist with communications plus engineering. And just how well this works, or how many degrees of success, indicates how long it takes to get the message across, or how well. That would be one from the Nighthawk. Rani's got a seven in doing. Does uh, the Shram take this instead, even if he may not have a throw kiss? Sure. No momentum, but, you know, uh, you've got a better chance. Mm -hmm. Rani have a value uh, determination she can pop? Ah, she actually does. I totally forgot about that. Oh. If not, she could get another one. Uh, what's her value? Good to go, but uh doesn't seem... Super applicable here. Doesn't seem super. Applicable. A new one, a new value. The words got to get out. <laughs> yeah, I. That's a good title, but I'm gonna override Can't stop that. The signal. The signal. <laughs> that's why I, I was, was just say. thinking what? that too. <laughs> yes, right. yes. We're all agreed. We all said it at the same time. Yes. <laughs> oh Lord. Can't stop the signal. Okay. Can't stop the signal. Okay. There's only two other IPs we've infringed on tonight. Yep. Well, you know, yesterday, last time it was... Um, bah. Last time it was Mulder and Scully. This time it's, you know... <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. Who? Yeah, precisely. Yeah, who? Uh, so, mind who's you, rolling, please? Mind you, technically, the characters that your Mulder and Scully were based on were based off of Mulder and Scully. Yep. <laughs> Those are great right. books, by the way. I'll go ahead and vote Rani. Sure. Daring Engineering. Uh, gonna go pop value, of course. Or some, some determination, rather. Okay, so that is a grand total of four successes plus one from the ship. <clears throat> You are a um, you are able to get the message out almost nearly instantaneously. Um, how well it's going to work between or what the impact has on the Tholia talks is yet to be seen, but you have done uh, you have let them know. 
A response is not immediately forthcoming, however. Uh, what do you wish to do? Sir, we have the codes and everything, so we could beat feed up there. Warp 9.9.9.9.97. Or thereabouts. Man, at this point in time, even though it really goes against my better judgment, it's probably best if we actually reveal ourselves so we don't damage whatever diplomatic talks may actually be taking place. We'll go ahead and and set course for Tholia, maximum warp. And we but can I... just spam the access codes to as we're beating feet. Mm -hmm. I have no intention of provoking the Tholians any further, and uh, taking a bit of a risk here, but let's just, based on the intelligence that we discovered, let's assume that at least these talks are happening in good faith. Okay. So. <clears throat> ah, I have my handouts here somewhere. There we go. Okay, so. At maximum warp, it would take you roughly, uh, let's say, about 15 hours to get there. Uh, in that amount of time, uh, you do finally receive a communication from the USS Archangel. It pretty much says, thanks for the heads up. We are continuing apace. Or, or, sorry, thanks for the heads up. The attackers have been neutralized. Uh, Nighthawk's presence is still undetected. We'll meet you at Rendezvous Point Beta. And this message is uh, signed correctly? Just that making is, sure? It is correctly signed. Um, Admiral Yamato is a bit of a preener, so his um, his style is unique. Mm -hmm. Well, even if they say they've been neutralized, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we can't find any lingering things out here. Mm -hmm. If... <laughs> If the attack on Thalia and the Yank Angel was called off, there still has to be somebody scattering to uh, make haste to at least get Hightail out of there and come up with a new plan. And that's what we're going to do right now. Okay. And how are you going to do it? Great question. Presenting that to the crew. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we have a conference hall. Yes, we do. All right, crew. I got, I got nothing. <laughs> can, can we track that tarantula dreadnought signature as it left that station and track that on the way back? Ah, that's a good idea. And maybe pick them up. Sure. See, unfortunately, my my thinking is more of the fact why the. Uh, Chrono particles ended here, so the Tholians we fought, I'm assuming, on the Cathar homeworld were part of the Splinter group and not part of the actual Tholians. Mm -hmm. Saradex on on Kate, he actually said that he was trying to overthrow the Tholian government, so few words. I don't remember that. Okay. So they're definitely a splinter group. Or did I totally misremember that, GM? Uh, nope, that is indeed what Karavix's motivation okay. was. Okay. Well, you could investigate the station more, or you could try to track down the Dreadnought, or find a plan C that the GM hasn't considered and will likely lead to hijinks. Um, what That's station? That's usual route. <laughs> well, this, what's left of it. I mean, the you blew up the communications console, but a single phaser bomb isn't going to blow up a, you know, load-bearing structure completely. But it had the multivariant tachyon induction equalizer. Yeah, that's why it took out about six decks instead of just one. Okay. All right. I'm thoroughly impressed you remembered that from 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I just looked up in the chat a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Fair enough. I was like, wow, that's yeah. impressive. He read the script. Yeah. Why did I never get a copy of the script? 
you're one of you, I. You're one of the. You're you're better freeform. Trust me. I, that's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, decision time. I think folks. we need to go after the. Yeah, I think we need to go after the dreadnought. Or back to the. So it's dreadnought or back to the station for more sneaking and pooping. Well, honestly, I mean, the dreadnought, in my opinion, is, has, is long gone. If the attack's gone and we're in the middle of deadly in space, I, the odds are kind of against us actually just trying to track down that one ship. Uh, let's go back to the station. It's our only reliable source of intel at this point in time. And every time, at least every time in the past, like, 48 hours or so that we keep moving to and from the station. Something keeps happening. So, I don't know. But possibly third time is a charm. Okay. Going hot or going quiet? Uh, if nobody else there, well, we'll throw it under black alert. But uh, if there's nobody else there, then I want us to uh, completely thoroughly investigate this place. Okay. Like full, How are the uh, engines doing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a great question. That is a good question. I'd forgotten about that small side, you know, small technical issue. Uh, Thishran, could you please roll me a control plus engineering? Or a daring plus engineering, depending on how you want to repair the sh engines. Uh, uh, difficulty of two. I suppose I should do control engineering, considering it's the engines. I probably need them for a while. Probably a good idea. So you and one other individual can assist, probably one of your engineering crew. Uh, sure, let's get Kassat to help. Actually, you know what? Why don't I also... I'm going to spend... Buy an extra dive with... with you have no momentum. Or are you buying it with threat? Yeah, with threat. Ooh, fine. Since I have the bolt. Sure. I'll take that threat. And I'll re-roll one of them just to see if I get the moment. Sure. Nope. nope. Not going to work there. Uh, who's assisting? Or is anyone assisting? Uh, what do we get? Yeah, we should go on the engineering. Cassot? Sure. Uh, someone roll Cassot's control engineering, please. Where is Cassot? I I've got it. Yeah, go and roll her. Him. They have a focus? I don't know. Do they? I'm sure he probably does. Propulsion have systems? Yeah. Propulsion systems. Yep, then that's one. But Woo! he doesn't have Apparently, he and, or his working method and Thishran's working method are quite incompatible for this task. But it's still enough for Thishran to work his genius and restore power to the engines. So, uh, the USS Nighthawk uh, does a quick roundabout and heads back to the station. Uh, thankfully, it is still appears to be in its previous condition uh, with... There's no longer smoke billowing out of the control center. It appears to have been walled off, or actually it appears just to have been exposed to vacuum with emergency bulkheads lower down, uh, sealing uh, the uh, atmosphere in place. All right, Commander, I want multiple away teams on this station. I want you to comb every single inch of it. We need to. We need. To ex we need way more intel than what we've got right now, and I need a reliable lead. All right. Um. I'll run one, and I'll have Commander Helsing run one, and well, how about if we take uh, one side, you take the other, and we'll meet in the middle. <laughs> Cool. Um, you take uh, Loxley and Yaz for security, okay. and I'll keep uh, Hanara Noel, and I'll take Vaid. Okay. Uh, hang on, that's a lot of names being thrown around. So that was Loxley and Noel is going with Bashir. Uh, uh, 
Uh, Yaz is going with Bashir. Oh, Yaz. Noel okay. and Hazar will stay with me. Of course, keeping the skilled people for yourself. Yep. I see how this okay. is. No, 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 no. Loxley goes with Bashir. Oh. Whoops. Noel stays with me. There we go. And Noel's already on the board. Not anymore. She's not. Oh. <laughs> yes, she is. Well, yeah. Now, well, now there's no duplicate <laughs> of her. Okay. So we have this team of four, and who else was going with Bashir? Um, I'll take engine an engineering person, and probably Neelix uh, might be good. The Shran? Did you say Neelix? What? Or Calix? <laughs> yeah, Calix. It's going to be Neelix to me. For I don't want Neelix. Neelix. <laughs> we'll leave him here at the station. I mean... <sighs> okay. That sounds like two good away teams. Okay. Once again, um, you beam onto the station. Sadly, the transporter enhancers aren't there anymore because you blew them to a pulp. But, eh, say Levy. You can always get more and give GM more threat. Nah. We okay. Go. Or not. Or not. Fine. Okay. So, um, just ping me about where you'd like the teams to be on the station. And I'll tell you what sort of stuff is there. Um, I'm going to go tip the tail and meet in the middle. That's my theory. Okay. So I'll go goes... to the far left and you go to the other end. It's there you just go. Perfect. About. So, you guys are over here. Oh, Michael. And you guys are over here. Okay. No, other way. Uh, that's what happens when I don't pay or, attention. We'll just do it the way you did it. Too late. There. <laughs> Even better. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Bashir's team. The front of the station appears to be a very poorly cobbled together refinery, um, which is, and it has seen a significant amount of operation. Um, Involving lava? <laughs> yes. Uh, there has been a decent amount of uh, refinery. Um, I used to know mining terms, now I don't. You know, turning stuff into metal and then shaping the metal to be, you know, useful. Uh, as you proceed further back into the station, uh, you find what was once probably an armory, which has long since been abandoned and left to the time and ravages of space. Um, and Are there any sort of weapons left? Uh, let's find out, shall we? Uh, do you want yeah. low or call low or high? Uh, hi. Okay. Uh, you find two Tholian uh, Thermionic um, Disruptor Rifles. Nice. They're very wanna... clumsy to hold in your five-fingered uh, digited hands. So if you want to use them, they're... Um, <clears throat> uh, using them is an increased difficulty. Um, but on their own, each one deals a debilitating uh, wound and vicious one and All a right. base four challenge dice. I'm going to uh, give those two to Loxley and Yaz and basically tell them to give them to Commander Helsing when uh, we get back for his personal collection. <laughs> in the rear uh, in the rear of the station uh, Lieutenant Vaid, you've, well, Helsing and Vaid find a, an odd contraption, and if Miss Vaid could please roll me a uh, insight plus science, please. And this is going to be a difficulty of two. Uh, any focuses I need for it? Um, temporal mechanics, alien technology, uh, Bajoran history, stuff like that. Uh, not nothing specific like that. No. Okay. That is one. And I'm going to let that succeed at threat. Um, because uh, 
you're not entirely sure how it works, why it works. Well, actually, you're not entirely sure how it works. It is a massive contraption, roughly two stories tall, and made with several interlacing and smaller and smaller metallic spheres. Uh, several conduits, wires, um, interlace with one another, projecting out a, a crystalline focus point at, right at the aft of the station, which would conveniently put it right at the initi initiating point of the chroniton tether. Um, one of, however, your scan indicates something very odd is that in the center of all of this, you're reading a, a signature that is very familiar to all Bajorans. It appears to be a Bajoran orb. <laughs> or at least the energies of one. This is interesting. As you realize that, you're getting a quick communication from Commander Bashir. As Bashir, you, uh, the, as you are leaving the armory, two Tholians are catch you, and a bunch of you have to enter into combat. Boy, did we pick the wrong sides. <laughs> well, we put the Bajoran on the Bajoran artifact, so... Yeah, you know, bit of A, bit of B. So, um, you guys get to go, good guys go first. Okay. Um, let Loxley shoot, somebody want to take Loxley or Yaz? I'll go ahead and grab Yaz. Somebody else wants to grab okay. Loxley. I'll take Loxley. Remember when I said I'd come up with a yeah. Tholian token i lied nah. um and they're within phaser range oh yes most definitely is it still is it uh, difficulty two to hit uh difficulty three unless you take a minor action to aim in which case aiming will reduce the difficulty down to two and will not allow the reroll. or i use call to action and let uh, loxley get a free <laughs> Yeah, that could be. Well, it could go. It could go Loxley to to Yaz right after it. Or no, call to action. Will let me do a minor action for free. Yeah, call right. Exactly. Call. I don't have. Yeah, I have call to action. Quick to action. You have call or quick. Call. So okay. that gives you the minor action to. So yeah, you can get it yeah, for free. Yeah, give me the minor action for aim. It's my minor action for charge. Okay. And are they in suits or are they without suits? They're without suits. Okay, and we'll do it with um, the uh, uh, area effect. Okay. And... Well, that's four successes, so that's uh, two momentum. Loxley, let's roll some challenge dice and see if there's even Tholians left after this. She only has seven oh, dice. Only seven. <laughs> only ha only has four for security. Can't you add momentum to like damage if serves or could? Oh yeah. Um, Reroll the zeros. Sure thing. There you go. Uh, that's 10 in total, plus two effects, but that is enough. Both of them. Yep. Yeah. They don't even get time to call out your presence. Well, they get time to screech at you. Loxley immediately turns and fires towards the annoying sound, and they both stop screeching, moving, etc., Well, that was quick combat. All right. Well done. Mop it up. Let's go home, boys. <laughs> uh. 
So well, while back while back on board the ship, mm -hmm. I'd actually like to uh, see if we could uh, get the information that Bashir originally took sure. uh, down to the uh, data science lab in the binaries, and I want to see if um, either any of their specific signatures or the the type of their manifesto or anything comes up in any federation uh intel database or possible known terrorist groups or people that have used some of this you know comparative language right. not just you know in, at least in terms of the specific okay. uh engagement sure uh this is going to be a uh reason plus security uh ship can assist either the ship or the binars can assist with this uh, if the ship assists, it will be computer security. Uh, pattern recognition would be a good one to have. And because the information you're looking for is quite obscure, that's going to be a difficulty of four. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, do the security roll on this. Okay. Uh, computers, computer security, security for the Nighthawk. That's right. It's an 11 to the fourth with a focus. That's pretty good. And that's the four degrees of success you need. Nice. Uh, so the Tholian space has been fairly impenetrable to Starfleet intelligence, primarily because you really can't disguise a typically humanoid intelligence agent as a Tholian with any degree of functionality after the genetic modification or the forced limb rearrangement surgeries are over and done with. Uh, as a result, what you have is ironically gained more through second-hand information gained through the Typhon Pacts or gained through other agents embedded in other factions within the Typhon Pact. Uh, these agents have reported a smattering, and by smattering I mean one of one or two, th uh, one, two or three reports, uh, all of which could be five years old, indicating that the Tholian government is not as stable as it once was. Um, it appears that the schism, that there was a, at some point a political schism within the Tholian ascendancy. Um, with several of the hardline xenophobics um, wishing that the Tholians had just stuck out or kept their noses out of the Typhon Pact. And it's entirely possible that these hardliners are the type of people that would, or type of Tholians that would resort to extreme measures against their own kind. Is there any evidence that would s s come to suspect that there are members other than the than the Tholians that are actually taking part in these activities? I mean, I understand, I understand that uh, you know th it's the Tholian xenophobics that are probably you know rattling the saber, and it's probably an internal Tholian thing. But I'm a better question, I suppose. Let me rephrase that: Have other members of the Typhon Pact committed? similar actions within their own respective societies that mirror what's going on right now? Not necessarily with time travel, of course, but... Right, yeah. Um, that would be a one-cost momentum. That would be uh, the one momentum for a question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to spend it. Okay. Um, it's very interesting that... I mean, it's about six or eight months apart, probably longer than that. The GM's sort of forgotten his calendar... But you do recall that one of the Nighthawks' first missions was to rescue the original council of the Breen Confederacy after their, they were overthrown by a new council. Uh, since that time, um, the Breen have become more agitated and have at some point, or at points in recent past, begun uh, flinging or quote-unquote, testing weapons on planets that are, A, already dead, or never had life to begin with, 
but also planets that are extremely close to the Federation space. So close that it's not entirely clear who, what side of the border they might be on. All right, that gives me bad ideas that I could use down the road. Thank you. I appreciate it. Hey, you're welcome. And there you go. Uh, they spent that one momentum there, Thishran. So, back to the station. So, um, team in the back, or I should say time machine team, you're up. What do you wish to do? So, what do you see, Vade? Uh, there's, there's an orb. A what? There, there is an orb. It come here. <laughs> As in a Bajoran religious artifact orb. Yes, yes, uh, a Bajoran orb. There, there's one Ooh. here. This is big. Helsing to Nighthawk. Nighthawk receiving. What's up? Hey, Captain. It looks like. We found the a device of some type could be what was actually powering the tether, and it looks to have a Bajoran orb as part of it, either a focusing tool or some of the type of crystal that it's using to power the chroniton energy through. But it has a Bajoran orb. Mr. Helsing, if you are able to confirm your position, your suspicions, then I immediately want you to safeguard that orb and take it into custody. Try to do that. I'm just do getting we happen fly. to have anything? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, we got eight pair of hands, four pair, six pair, five, five pair. Besides hands. <laughs> Well, two of them are actually paused, but... Oh my gosh. Okay. Sorry, Anara. Um, Can we I grab don't scrap know... metal? I don't know the way to go about doing this. Is there a religious ceremony we have to do first? We don't want to disrespect. I know they're very, very powerful. Can anyone just touch it? Is it in the containment box, or is it just there? The is no, it is not in a containment box. It is held in a. It's sort of. It is sort of hovering in a chamber of zero gravity, with uh, two giant electrodes connected on either side. Okay. Would the containment box have a distinct signature we could scan for? Uh, you can try. It's going. Um, you're looking for a very specific energy signature. Uh, Could the Nighthawk scan for it? Assuming it even exists. This is going to be a uh, insight plus science. And whoever's on the ship can run insight science. Or whoever's on the ship. That would be you with the insight science here and then we could have the ship assist with its sensors. I'll let that happen since you're relatively unbothered except for the fact you're in a uh, clunky suit but yes uh, <laughs> and if you have metallurgy oh. that would be a good one here uh. well nighthawk assists yeah i i should have mentioned this is going to be a difficulty of four <laughs> <laughs> all right we don't find it well vade could roll two crits you never know Oh no, I rolled. Oh, that she was. Missed. Oh yes. She's... <laughs> you are unable to find a. You're unable to find a material that matches the typical orb containment box. All right. Do we have like a? Is there well, any type to... of material around, like a gunny sack, strips of cloth, or anything we can make oh. a um, there quick is... bag out of? There's a decent number of carrying containers around. Um, I, they're probably some form of like metal, like a fiber, like re- heat resistant fibers or a metallic net of sorts. But yes. Or, or 
slight metagaming. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> we we uh we just replicated one. That we can do. Nara, can you replicate the, the containment box and teleport it down? I think that'd be an engineering task to make sure we could get the exact materials on hand. Uh, that it probably, probably would be. Mm-hmm. Do they have to be enough... blessed by a Vedic or anything? Well, I think that if we create an advantage for uh, the Shran, that it's the ultimate disco ball. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I don't mean a brag or anything, but, you know, vacations did think I was a god, so you got my blessing. Oh, dear God, it's going to explode on us for that blasphemy. <laughs> no. Uh, okay, um, I'm going to say that this, is, that this will be a difficulty of two. So whoever's on the ship, uh, control engineering. Um, maybe Rani? Just a thought. And the ship will assist with um, computers plus engineering. That's one success from the Nighthawk. Who's on the ship? I'm not so hearing anyone Rand. stepping up to volunteer. Let's see if I can find Rain. I don't know where she is on here. I oh, think she's under engineering. I was just looking if you're trying to see if anyone had more applicable focus. She's got mining equipment, sensor operations. Would you believe it? He said it was. She also has replicating miracle work. I'm not entirely sure that's a focus, but replicators. Okay, replicators would work. It is. He said it was uh, engineering and what? Uh, control engineering. Wow. Nope. Um, so, uh, Rani believes that she has me- replicated the box. Um, it doesn't. It will work well enough, but it's. Or at least she thinks it does. Alright, we'll use the box, but still put it inside a net, a, a bag of some type to carry it. Alright. Uh, so, uh, USS Nighthawk, um, as Rani is doing this, Jefferson, or whoever is on tactical, uh, says, Sir, that dreadnought is back. Uh, ra- estimated rendezvous time with the station is 20 minutes. Well, in that case, let him come back. We have control of the station. Let's go to Black Alert. Notify the away teams to get in stealthy positions and prepare to ambush them upon their arrival. No, no, I'm going to make sure the Stridwell is not leaving. If they return to the same access port that they were at originally when we passed through here, let's mm-hmm. see if we can actually sabotage it so we okay. can cause some damage. Very well. Uh, where is the red dot token? I deleted it because that is me being me. So, there's the dreadnought. Dreadnought is a scale 10, or scale 9, I should say, but yes. So, okay, uh, away team, what are you guys up to? Oh, we got to get the orb. Okay. Well, because the Dreadnought's here, do we leave the orb to well, use? It's 20 minutes out. It? You have time. Okay. No, we, we, we get the orb just in case we need to beat feet. Okay. Uh, Lieutenant Vaid, could you please roll me a presence plus command test? Uh, sorry, no. Presence plus contest, and I'm not telling you the difficulty. Oh. Go ahead and use all the momentum. Uh, you have none. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, use it all. It's all you. <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm having a hard time today. <laughs> all right. Uh, Vaid, as you begin to load the orb, um, you start feeling a present... You start feeling the... You start feeling your body 
sort of move on its own as it grabs the orb and your eyes begin to delve deep within it. And all of, all of a oh, sudden, boy. you have a near certainty this dreadnought is not here to dock. This dreadnought is here to destroy the station. And remove all evidence. Do I snap out? Yes. Yes, you do. We need to get off this thing. <laughs> What's up? I, okay? I think I saw something. I. We need to get off this thing. I am not going to question what I saw. What? What do you see, real quick? That Alex. dreadnought is coming here to destroy this station. More specifically, the... probably the. Orb. Get the get the orb packed up. Nighthawk, um, Helsing to Nighthawk. What is it, Commander? Um, it looks like uh, Lieutenant Vade had a quick vision from the orb that Dreadnought is here to destroy the station, uh, probably to get rid of any evidence to protect their coup. Uh, we need to get the orb and get everybody off this off the station. We might be able to hide and just ride it out if we can't get away. With all due respect, Commander, I don't necessarily think that's advisable. Even though the Dreadnought is approaching our position, we still have the element of advantage. And if we do manage to successfully sabotage this, if we do manage to successfully sabotage the station, there's probably more intel that we can gain from the Dreadnought. I don't really necessarily think it's it's wise for us to leave. Sir, do you know the strengths of a tarantula type Dreadnought? I mean, I don't get me wrong, we're definitely outgunned here, but truth be told, this is the best that we, intel that we've gotten in quite some time. I'm not necessarily keen on leaving. I agree. All right, but you want us off the station regardless. Because they had saw the transfer shooting at the station. Well, I mean, don't get, I'm no expert on Bajoran orbs, but I understand their visions aren't necessarily of the future. Only specific orbs, in, to my knowledge, have the ability to do that. Well, they use this one for traveling back in time, so for it to see into the future wouldn't be out of the realm of possibility. <sighs> I'd actually like to quickly check uh, Nighthawk's computer banks to see if we actually still know the location of the Orb of Time. Of course. Uh, this is going to be a difficulty of one. Actually, because you need momentum, I'll make it a difficulty zero. Uh, so, uh, insight, or no, reason plus science, and the ship will assist with computers plus science. Oh, and I closed my sheet. Oh, I suck. Hold <laughs> up. That's all right. That's... And that is formal. That momentum. is the... That's the wrong one. That's security. Oh, um, still... Uh, that's still at least two successes from you, so... He'll take that role with threat. Yeah. No. <laughs> that, that's, uh, th I'll give you through momentum for that role. <clears throat> so, uh, there was... Uh, at bleh. As far as anyone is concerned, as far as the records go, the orbs are, with several other Bajoran orbs, they're being stored at the Monastery of Ashala on Bajor. Maybe there's a orb to rule them all. So it was created in secret. <laughs> Yet another IP. Or any... considering where oh, uh, we could always say that also we don't know if they're screwing with alternate dimensions and timelines and 
Really oh, cool. yeah. Uh, at this <laughs> point, the um, uh, Dreadnought begins powering its weapons. And it begins oh. to lob torpedoes at this station. Do, you got, do we have the orb out? Uh, yes, you have the orb out. Okay, good. Well, uh, invade, yeah. secure it. Yes, uh, babe. Is it secure? Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, Doing my darndest. <laughs> do I have to roll for it? No, you don't. Well, the orb is secure, and they're bombing the station anyway, so there's no way that I can sabotage it, so there's no way that I'm actually going to have the encounter play out the way I choose. So, let's get the away team out of there. Because there's no way we're winning this fight. And that was my one advantage. We can always search the wreckage. Uh, this is going to be... Um, well, well, by this point, there's no shields on the station, so that's going to be easy enough. So it's going to be a difficulty 3 transporter test. Uh, control engineering on Zell's part, and the ship will assist with structure engineering. Or, sorry, sensors engineering. I've got Zell. All right. Control engineering. One from the Nighthawk. And two from Zell. That's enough. Uh, as the station begins to break up around you, you each are uh, you each feel the brief wa brief weightlessness as artificial gravity is lost throughout the station, as you are all energized on board the USS Nighthawk. Mr. Mr. Davis, please get us out of here. Take us out of Tholian space. Maximum warp. Yes, sir. Black alert. With pleasure, sir. And we captured the destruction of the station on some type of recorded medium. Absolutely. Now, uh, just because I feel like I'm a nice person, you there were still a uh, grand total of four Tholians on there, including two that were unconscious. What are you doing with them? Or are you leaving them behind? Oh, no, we're definitely taking them with us if they were unconscious. Okay, so we'll take these two. <clears throat> we got the old hands, they got an old. <laughs> and with that, you breeze your way out of Tholian space. Let's see. Not there. And you have two Tholians in the brig. More playthings for the Tenevade. Yep. Uh, because they were outside their suits um, when you extracted them, Coox has configured the internals of the brig to be as... 400 Kelvin. Sure. Yeah, probably Shh. slightly Ish. under that because anything <laughs> that hot would put the Nighthawk at risk. But... Yeah, we want to keep them a little sluggish anyways. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So you have two Tholians in con or in the confines of your brig, and you're buggering out. And uh, that's pretty much as far as I've gotten for plot. So who has anything else they'd like to do? To double check, we got the orb out too, right? You do have the orb, yeah. yes. Okay. <clears throat> so that's a question for Vayed. What are you doing with the orb? Uh. Let's see, is there uh, potentially in a containment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, not necessarily a cell of its own, but definitely in its own uh, container mm -hmm. and kept safe to potentially, like, observe and try to figure out which orb it could be and how it got into the Tholian hands. Absolutely. So this is going to be a, so it's easy enough to come up with the proper containment method now that you have time and the entire computers on, or the entire uh, Nighthawk computers at your disposal and not being shot at by any potential enemy. So the containment device is easy enough for you to create. Uh, figuring out what this orb is, is another matter entirely. 
um, because as far as the Bajoran clerics are are certain or are concerned, the all of the Bajoran orbs have been located, or at least they understand what the fate of them all are. Um, the only one that they had, the one that they had found, or eh, um, ah, Lieutenant Erkin was part of the expedition that discovered one of the last uh, known Bajoran orbs, which was the Orb of Strength, and that orb was found destroyed. Okay. If you're doing tests on this in the science, I'm so going to be... <laughs> I figured you would be. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I would also like to send a notice back to Bajor that an an orb, potentially an orb, has been found. Okay. Obviously, the message will take some time to get there and back, which, well, ramifications of which will be dealt with in a future episode. But yes. <laughs> uh, Romy, and let's see, this is probably going to be a history check of some form or another. So, oh, Romy, no. insight. I hate using insight science for this, but I don't know a better one. Maybe reason science? Yeah, let's roll reason science. Uh, and if you have history or religious artifacts, that would be I fine. I have archaeology. Archaeology would work. <laughs> are you rolling or are you assisting? I, I think... You. You're definitely I think you should lead on roll. this. Yeah. You're the Bajoran. So, right. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you should lead on it, but I'm happy. I, I want to be part of it and help. Yeah, Bajoran's an automatic focus, yeah. right? Is it? <laughs> I don't know. By the, at this point. So that's two successes from Vaid. Does Mr. Bashir roll anything? There's, he had to reset. Oh, okay. And. Is getting there. Yes. That's four successes, so that's at least uh, that's one momentum out of you. Hmm. So what? Um, so Vaid, as you are beginning to study this thing, uh, once again, um, the an answer just sort of comes to you, and it is. Um, it identifies itself, or you believe that this is an orb of clarity, which is a pe peculiar one, uh, because the orb of clarity, or I'm sorry, not the orb of clarity, the orb of truth. I was looking at the wrong series of orbs, um, mm -hmm. which is very odd, because the orb of truth is also known as one that is currently being held in Bajor. Oh, fine. <laughs> so is it possible they're duplicates? Or as it was posed earlier, that time has been messed with and we are blending? Well, I will let you have one more insight science test to see if you can figure this out. Um, insight science, um, if you have particle physics, temporal phenomenon, uh, quantum mechanics, that sort of thing. I have or you can always let the shine uh, take it apart and see if you put it back together. I mean, can you imagine how cool the disco ball would be? <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Pretty good. Balls. I mean, it's already round. You just got to glue the little mirrors onto it. <laughs> Should we go let ahead and use momentum on this? Let me use... If you got a value, you can pop that too. Uh, sorry, what was that, Bashir? I was going to say, let me do the um, chronological test, not the spiritual okay. one you're doing, because I do have temporal mechanics, and I also have, um, ah, trying to move stuff around. Never forget the past. That works. <laughs> I want to burn for a couple extra successes. 
Insight. Science. <clears throat> value I see is something out there is calling, but I don't know if that really... That's a good value, considering oh. it's literally called you at least once, maybe twice. True. <clears throat> Bashir took the lead, yeah. so you'd be assisting. You can't okay. pop a value. Yeah. All right, but so yeah, it's... so I popped the value too, so there's four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's easy enough. And okay. there's five. That's probably enough to max you out. I don't even think I gave you the difficulty. It doesn't matter at this stage. <laughs> um, by poking and prodding with, you know, all sorts of non-intrusive tests, uh, you determine that A, the orb is not from the past. B, the orb is not from the future. However, C the orb is not from this universe. Its quantum signature, it does not match. And on that note, I think we're going to call it a session. Nice. <laughs> so, thank you all for playing, and thank you all for watching, and we will be back next week with probably a more lighter episode. Uh, we are attempting to move this game on a weekly basis, where... Every second week will be the long plot-driven adventures you guys are watching. The other ones will be more lighter and eh, shorter and probably more character-focused. So, until next week, guys. Bye!